What's up everybody, Adam Eckler back again uh, with another jazz lesson video. We're gonna talk about how to play the blues again today. I'm gonna give you some more tools uh, for how to navigate chord changes in the blues, how to memorize what those chord changes are. Simple stuff, but stuff that's really foundational and really important to learn. Uh, before we get started, I wanna thank you all for liking and subscribing. Uh, that's been a huge help for me and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I got a, a notification today from YouTube that I've been uh, entered into the YouTube partnership program. Uh, so that's a huge plus for me. That means that I can monetize my channel and that's all thanks to you for watching these videos, checking them out, sharing them with your friends. I really appreciate it. I hope this continues to grow. So we're going to keep it simple again today. We're going to talk about blues again, but what we're going to talk about is we're going to get a little bit more in depth with what the chord changes are and being able to navigate those chord changes, at least the chord tones of those chord changes, uh, before we move on to part three and probably a part four of this series. We're gonna make a couple modifications to what we did in the previous video. In the previous video, we did four measures of the one chord, two measures of the four chord, two measures of the one chord, and then five, four, one. And we're gonna keep most of that stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a four chord in the second measure. Uh, which is really common. A lot of blueses have a four chord in the second measure. And instead of going to the five chord in the ninth measure, we're going to go to the two chord and we're gonna go two, five, one instead of five, four, one. So this is changing the sound of the blues a little bit. It's becoming a little closer to what we play when we do blues in a jazz context, uh, which really is like kind of adopted from 1940s, Charlie Parker and what he did with the blues is. The first thing I wanna do is make sure we have our foundation right. So we have the one chord for one measure, the four chord for one measure, the one chord for two measures, and then four for two, one for two, and then a two, five, one in the last four bars. In the previous video, we did roots and thirds only, uh, which introduced a whole bunch of notes outside of the blues scale. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the rest of those pitches so we can really start to hear the harmony of these chords. The one chord is C7, and these are the notes. Let's play them up and down. So that's the one, three, five, and seven of C7. And we're gonna go to the four chord. So the second measure goes to the four chord, let's go to the four chord. So this is one, three, five, seven of F. Uh, and this is pertaining to the F major scale. So when we say one, we mean the first note of the F scale. And when we say three, we mean the third note. When we say five, we mean the fifth note. And when we say seven, in this case, we're not saying major seven, we're saying seven or dominant seven, F seven, uh, which means the seventh is flatted. So we take the seventh note of the F major scale, we lower it down a half step to become a scale called the Mixolydian scale and we use those pitches. So we use one, three, five, seven of F Mixolydian scale. All right, so now what we need to do is practice going back and forth between the one and the four because we're gonna do that a lot in the song. One, two, one, two, three. And now let's put it into context. So we've practiced going back and forth. In context, it goes one measure of one, one measure of four, two measures of one, two measures of four, two measures of one, okay? Uh, so that's the first eight measures of the blues. So we're gonna do those eight measures. One, two, we follow along with the sheet music. One, two, ready. Now we're gonna learn the two chord. The two chord comes from the second note of C. We're in the key of C uh, for this song. Second note of C is D. So now we're gonna look at the two chord and the two chord in a major key is always minor. So we're gonna build a minor chord starting on the two. The two is D. So we have to do D minor, okay? So we have to know what scale to use. A lot of times in jazz music, we use the Dorian scale, uh, which is the natural minor scale with a raised scale degree six. One, three, five, seven of the D minor scale. 
is D, F, A, C. Duh. Then I automatically hear it going to the five chord. I can hear that in my head and it wants to come out. Is the next place we go to the five. So the five starts on G. G is the fifth note of the C scale. So the five starts on G and then we arpeggiate the five based on G mixolydian, uh, one, three, five, and seven. Uh, one, three, five, and seven of G mixolydian, G, B, D, and F, okay? So we got G, B, D, F as our five chord, and then we go right back to the one, and we're gonna leave the last couple bars as just a one chord. Now what we need to do is we need to go through the whole form of the tune, arpeggiating the chords in time, kind of like we're walking a bass line, but we're only using one, three, five, and seven. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, so now you're able to arpeggiate through all of these chords, one, three, five, and seven. So what I like to start to do here is I ask my students to arpeggiate in a different order. Start on the seven. Having to, to think of the seven first on each chord I think is a really good exercise because we don't want to play the root of each chord when we're improvising. We wanna kinda of stay away from the root because the root sounds a little vanilla. It sounds a little bit not cool. Uh, so the more we can use other notes than the roots, Wynton Marsalis famously said, if you never play a root in your solo, it'll be a good solo. You know, roots are fine, but our tendency is to see, you know, F7 and play F because that's the first thing we see. But if we can start to think of E flat first, the seven, uh, then maybe we'll play E flat first when we see F7 and not F. It's a great way of kind of tricking your brain. So when you practice these, practice them from the seven down or practice them from the third up. Uh, so let's do from the seven down as an exercise. One, two, one, two, three. The next thing you can do is you can go from the third up. Like that. One, two, a one, two, three. The next step is to add in some chromatics. So I like to add in these chromatics right away because it allows you to kind of set up the idea of surrounding a target pitch with half steps and targeting that pitch as your landing points. This is something we call chromatic approach tones uh, or uh, just straight approach tones. And approach tones uh, set us up to hear a certain pitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna surround each one of our pitch our pitches with half steps and we're actually gonna, we're, we're gonna do one half step at a time so we'll go from underneath each of the pitches to start B to C E flat to E F sharp to G A to B flat okay a one two three And then the next step that you want to do is try to do this from the opposite side. So now we try to do uh, half steps from above the pitches. Which is 
becomes a really pretty cool sound. It starts to sound almost like diminished in quality or uh, it gives you a little bit of a, of a darker, more altered sound to playing over these dominant chords. It has a pretty cool sound to it. Okay. Uh, and then when we get to the two chord, for the two and the five. Stay tuned for Learn to Play the Blues part three, which is coming soon. We're gonna do some chord substitutions. We're gonna do some alterations on the one chord, uh, treating it like it's a five chord. We're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff, uh, but we're gonna pace ourselves and get there when we're ready. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit like on this video, hit subscribe, and let me know if there's any kind of topic you'd like me to talk about that's specific about trumpet, about jazz music, about improvisation. Uh, I'd be happy to, to field your questions. See you.